All right, so this is a session that I put together for staff development with, in the college, so integrating Welsh language in sessions for non-Welsh speakers. Um, starting by a little bit of my experience, my background to start with, um, I've got my experience with languages. Um, having gone through school, I've done my GCSE French for however many years, three years, I think we worked on that probably in total. Um, if I look back now, I can probably still order Coca-Cola. I'm unfortunately still 16 years old and live in Willanall in England. That's about as good as I get. Um, so really my sort of experience with languages is not very good. I'm not very good at learning languages. So I, this was sort of a bit of a problem for me trying to, to get the Welsh in. Um, I've found as well using simple meet and greet can come back and make you feel a bit awkward. Certainly in the classroom, meet and greet the students and then as they sort of then perhaps try and converse with you whilst it's like, well, actually I was, I was sort of being polite. Um, but I, I use Janice, uh, Welsh language coordinator, as a sort of bit of a, a say-so here because I'll, I'll sort of meet Janice in the corridor and I'm like, Shemai Janice, Shemai, and then she gives me something else and I'm like, oh, no, no, I'm out. Um, so I'm sort of moving it on. Um, and then from my manager's point of view, we get that we should be using Welsh in classroom in a positive or natural way, um, per term is dim cows, and that's what she says all the time, it's like dim cows, dim cows, dim cows. Right, okay, okay, so we'll get the Welsh into lesson, but in a natural way, the students don't see it as cheesy, they, they like it, they go, oh yeah, that, that's there. Um, but we've also got great observations within the college where we've got our observations from certainly the college, where we've got Estin coming in, that we should be trying to include the Welsh language and the Welsh culture, which from all of their points of view, um, not speaking Welsh, that's quite easy to localise it. Certainly here we can talk about sort of towns, villages, the castles, St David's, sort of doing all that side, local suppliers, that is really quite straightforward and easy. Um, but certainly trying to get the Welsh language in, um, I really struggle with. Um, and so when I had a graded observation, I just thought, well, right, my group, login page for a website, it's something they're doing, um, they'll relate to it a bit easier and I thought just keep it nice and simple, um, perhaps username and password, so we'll, we'll do a login section for the website, so please enter your username and password to log into the site, something like that, and I thought oh, it's nice and short, sweet, I can manage that. Um, and also we got in another tick in the box, the ESDGC, the fact that we're saying well you're creating a website, you're a Welsh company, therefore we're going to cater for Welsh people. So we'll put the Welsh language on there. Works fine. Um, so within the college then, we've got uh, Welsh language people that I can actually then get in touch with to try and get translations done. So I sent an email to a Welsh language uh, coordinator and said, is there any chance I can get this phrase translated? So I got, please enter your username and password to access the administration pages. And I thought, right. Brilliant, that's all I want, perfect. Um, rapid response uh, in a couple of minutes. Uh, and he actually came back with all of this. And I was like, oh no, oh no. I, I, I find I can show the students the translation, I can give them the text, and they'll go, hey, yeah, no, just say that. Oh no, how do I do that? Um, so, so I got back to Lisa and said, right, is there any way we can actually do a sound file of this translation? Um, and so that's what we actually got. So I've got um, a sound file that came back as the whole translation, so exactly as it is. Um, but then it was also broken down into usable parts. So username is this, password is this. Um, and that actually made more sense to the students as well. So they hear this whole phrase, but then they had to pick out the bits. So on their login page, they actually pick out username and put it in English and Welsh. Uh, put in the um, password, English and Welsh. Um, and so I've got the two sound files. Um, so I just click on the second word. Enw defnyddiwr username. Cyfryn air password. Tudal enau gweinyddol administration pages. And so with that then, the students could say, oh, I, I know that bit, I know that bit. And when I actually used it in the lesson, and they did actually, oh, I, I remember that from somewhere, I remember that. So they, even though they were saying they're not Welsh speakers and they don't want to use Welsh, it actually got them talking about it. They were like, oh, that's clever. How do we do that? Can we do that? Um, and so I right, had got the, the full translation as well. So then they're saying, hey, how do you say it? Got them the oi hen o'r dyfnyddiwr a'r cyfrinair. And we mynd i'r tudal enau gweinyddol. 
Um, and once I'd got that as well, I could then actually put that straight onto my Moodle page, so where the students access the, the information. So I've got my Moodle page on there, this is what we're going to do today. This is the translation that you need to actually get on your page. And at that point, when they say, Ian, how do you say that? Ha ha ha. And I click on my translation, it plays straight away from my Moodle page, and they were there, and it was fine. And then what we actually got them to do then, the websites that they'd created, so they actually created their website, um, they put in the English, the Welsh, and they actually embedded in the sound file as well. So if there's anyone who actually wanted to play the sound file, so it gets in a little bit of the accessibility in there as well, they can play the sound file. And then they picked out username and password from the individual bits of the translation as well. Um, and it just, as far as the session went, it just flowed, it was natural, they could see why they were doing it because it was a Welsh company, a Welsh website, therefore it, it should be in there. Um, and from my point of view, it, it helped me because I knew exactly when they said, how do you say that? I could click on my sound file and it, it was just good to go. So it actually worked really well within the lesson. Um, and then taking it from there, we actually got within the college, because again, this was my, my graded observation when I was doing it, it sort of got escalated up to management as good practice. Um, and we've actually done staff development sessions now on the creation of the sound files. Um, just trying to get it into the lessons, how to put it onto people's Moodle page so they can use it. But then we've got other groups as well now are starting to see different ways of doing it. And some staff are actually picking it up and the students are creating their own sound files. And the students are doing their presentations for different subjects and they'll embed, they do it all in English, but then they've got their Welsh sound files attached to it as well. So as well as perhaps getting across to staff, this is what we can do, the staff are then getting down to students and any Welsh speakers then within their class are then doing their own sound files. So it is actually working across the board as well. Um, and you know, the staff are using the technology we've got now as well to help them out. So it is working quite well across the college. And that's basically what we've been looking at within Hampshire College as far as embedding the Welsh and trying to use these sound files to make it appear natural within the lessons.